This is an absolutely amazing story in today's Washington Post by Beth Reinhardt and Josh Dossie. And it's, uh, the, the headline is, How a Trump Allied Group Fighting Anti-White Bigotry Beats Biden in Court. Stephen Miller, remember Stephen Miller, the guy who was kind of the engineer of Trump's uh, lock the children up and, and sell them into the, the, the Christian adoption networks? And now there's like hundreds of these children from, from south of the border who we have no idea who, where they are. Uh, you know, Donald Trump and Stephen Miller were literally trafficking them after they kept them in cages. And, and uh, my recollection is at least seven of them died. Well, that guy, that Stephen Miller, that, that, that fairly open, you know, uh, racist, fascist, has now started uh, an, a, a group called American for America First Legal. And what they are doing, he says, they're, they're calling themselves the long-awaited answer to the ACLU. And they have launched dozens of federal lawsuits challenging, the, I'm quoting from the Washington Post here, dozens of federal lawsuits challenging efforts to remedy racial disparities, uh, support LGBTQ students, or expand the pool of early voters. AFL-backed suits helped doom a $29 billion program that prioritized struggling female and minority-owned restaurants last year. And last week, a council created by the Department of Education that conservative parents groups uh, viewed as partisan. This is, this is something to pay attention to. David Hinosa, an attorney for civil rights under law, says many of these lawsuits are centered on making sure that white people remain in control and continue to benefit from unearned privileges and on maintaining the systemic discriminatory policies that have harmed black people and other people of color for generations. They got $6.3 million in donations last year, including $1.3 million from the Conservative Partnership Institute, um, uh, who, uh, again, reading from the Washington Post, whose leadership includes key figures in the effort to overturn the 2020 election. Uh, AFL's all-white, all-male board includes loyalists who recently trekked to Mar-a-Lago for Trump's 2024 campaign announcement. In the lead-up to the midterm elections, AFL also bankroll, bankrolled a multi-million dollar ad campaign that included inflammatory radio and TV spots demanding an end to, quote, anti-white bigotry, end quote, and accusing the White House businesses and universities of discriminating against white people. AFL was one of several groups in the first year, again, reading from the Washington Post, of the Biden administration by the Conservative Partnership Institute, a central hub of Trump, of the GOP's pro-Trump wing. CPI describes AFL as a partner on its website, and three AFL board members, including Mark Meadows, who served as chief of staff to Trump, have top CPI posts. And then they add, neither of these tax-exempt groups are required to disclose their donors to the public. This, I think the flag here, the thing that's important to pay attention to, is this meme that, you know, I remember this from the 70s, right? That, that white people are being discriminated against. I don't recall his name, but I, I believe this was when I was still living in Michigan. Uh, Louise and I lived in Michigan until 1978. And we... And there was this uh, white guy who wanted to get into the University of Michigan. In fact, as I recall, he wanted to get into the University of Me Michigan Medical School. And there's a, you know, only a certain number of slots. And the University of Michigan at that time had a, uh, a program where being black got points. It was an effort to kind of make up for literally a century of not even allowing black people into the university. And this guy didn't get his, his slot in the school at the University of Michigan. And he sued and he took it to the Supreme Court. And I, I remember these right-wing talk show hosts. And this, like I said, I think this, this is the 70s. I'd have to go back and look. But I remember these guys going on and on and on about how, you know, it's here it comes. They're going to start discriminating against white people. And it was a thing. And it was a thing that Richard Nixon was using. It was a thing that, uh, that uh, Ronald Reagan used in the 1980 election when he's, you know, he was talking about this and how that, uh, doesn't that get you upset that when that young buck in front of you in, in the supermarket line is buying champagne and steak with his food stamps? And we all know what he was talking about when he said young buck. And George Herbert Walker Bush used with the Willie Horton ads. 
And, uh, you know, George W. Bush was not, he was probably the least explicitly racist of all the Republican presidents. But, but this, this meme of uh, white people are the victims is going to be huge. You heard it here first in the 2024 election, two years from now. And Democrats damn well better get ready for this because the population of America is no longer more than 50% white. And uh, in fact, Texas passed that threshold a decade ago, doing voter suppression so aggressively. More than half of Texas's population is non-white. And as this happens, you're gonna hear more and more squealing and yelling and screaming from uh, so-called white rights groups just like the men's, uh, in the 70s, we also had the men's rights groups because this was after 73 and women got the right to an abortion. And as a result of that, they were, uh, we're the break shot. Uh, as, oh, we are, yeah. <laughs> there it is. As a result of that, they were, you know, yelling and screaming about that. The women are coming for our jobs. And then it was black people are coming for our jobs. Keep an eye on this. It's going to get big. You're listening to the